look over it, you know, two inches from the glass. It was a fascinating thing. To see it was just sitting there. It was no big deal. People walked past it, wouldn't have no idea. What they're looking at was one of the, the copies of the Magna Carta. But apart from all of that, what made the Magna Carta a useless piece of fluff was the fact that it was issued after a solemn, sacred uh, deed was done between King John, also known as uh, John Lackland, L-A-C-K land, meaning he had no property, and the Vatican, where he agreed to be the first vassal under this new political system called feudalism. Now, what's feudalism? Remember, we were talking before about bonds and that under the concept of bondage, a deliberate corruption of uh, the free farmer and the head of the household in the 13th century. Well, guess what? That's one of the elements of bondage, of, of, of uh, free feudalism. Feudalism was the creation of a system where lords and kings had absolute power, unprecedented power in the history of the Western world. There hadn't been this kind of power in any kind of civilization in the West, I don't think, well, ever. I mean, you'd have to go back to almost living in uh, nomadic tribes where the rule of law was, was as brutal. It created the concept that the Khazarian Empire was based on, where the average man and woman were less than servants, were less than slaves. They were literally animals to be disposed of, used, worked to death at any choice you liked. And what the feudal system did was make that entire system legal, lawful and franchised. So the first franchise was England and the claim on Ireland. And that was called the Golden Bull. And it meant that all the land of, of England was given to the Vatican in exchange for King John being the first vassal of this new system that effectively destroyed all law prior to that date and started again. So the Magna Carta is, uh, is an absolute, to me, an absolute aberration. So that's the long answer, Terry. Well, that was that was great. Thank you for that, Frank. I think that, that that's an amazing explanation. We really haven't gotten that that deep into Magna Carta in the past, but at least not on talk to that I can recall. So that, I think that's an amazing answer, even though it was long. Thank you. Um, now this is about common law. This question here, and just real quick before I get started into this question, if anyone on the phone line would like to. Uh, ask a question or add some input, please press star 8 on your phone and it will put you in the question queue and I couldn't get you unmuted at that point. All right, next question. Regarding common law, uh, doing anything with or in the common law system would then be considered admitting you're an inferior in standing, is that correct? Absolutely, you've got it. You've got it. When you admit you're a taxpayer, what does it do? It admits you're a criminal. I'm a registered criminal. It's like saying, I'm a re hello, I'm a registered sex offender. That's the same thing. If you stand there and say in common law, now I know, I know we're dealing with a level of ignorance in their system. I understand that. But you cannot presume that the ignorance is always there. It's Anglo-Saxon law, not common law. Common law means that you are claiming a privilege is a right that's why you say reserve I mean you, a right can't be taken from you but a privilege can think about what's called common law rights have you heard people say I reserve my rights yeah uh -huh. well if something's a right can it be taken away from you no a privilege can, can't it? It existed before you did, even. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So there is no such thing as common law rights. They're privileges, and they trick you. It's an illusion. So when you hear someone say, I reserve my rights, if they were real rights, you wouldn't have to reserve them, would you? Hmm. 
their privileges. And if their privileges, you can stand up there and say, I reserve this, I reserve that, reserve that. They can take it away from you because a privilege can be taken away from you like that. And that's what common law, quote unquote, rights are. If you want real rights, if you want the, the rights that cannot be removed from their system because their system is founded on them, they are the pillars of their system, they are called Anglo-Saxon rights. And they are the oath, consent, elocution. These are fundamental foundation rights and they've got nothing to do with common law. They are Anglo-Saxon. Common law created in the 16th century. Part of this mind control system we're talking about. Anglo-Saxon law was around a lot, lot longer before the Roman cult got up its idea to control the world. Alrighty. So, Frank, would you say then Anglo-Saxon law is actually changing around the word, so to speak, of actually meaning laws common, laws common and given to all people, all men and women? Well, it's called Anglo-Saxon because um, the word Anglo doesn't mean English. It means Anglais. It means Charlemagne. It means the true Christian knights. It means the the Holy Roman Empire that covered uh, what is called Fra France now, but the Frankish Kingdom, uh, Saxony, uh, and controlled most of Europe at the time of, uh, as I say, the Pippins, you know, Charlemagne, up to when they died out. It's basically the law of the land before the Roman cult came up with a plan to seduce uh, a bunch of criminals to take over, and that's called feudalism. Feudalism was basically giving organized crime uh, the deal of a lifetime and so they got in there and murdered uh, the long-standing uh, family lines because it was just too valuable to give up and that's what they wanted but prior to the Roman cult coming in uh, and then later many centuries later prior to the common law system in the 16th century Anglo-Saxon law by that term means the law that existed prior to common law, democracy, and the bar. It means the law that has a provenance back to what we call now the New Testament or the teachings of Jesus or the Gnostic beliefs or the beliefs of Christianity. So the provenance of Christianity goes to Anglo-Saxon law, not, absolutely not, to common law because common law is a trick. I'll give you another example of how they trick. The term fairness should go with the word equality. So it should be fairness and equality. And yet, and equality comes from the word aquus. Got nothing to do with, with, with horses. It actually means even. A-E-Q-U-I-S, I think, is the word. I've got the word there, equality, def defined somewhere. But when you hear it today, what the bar does is they call it fairness and equity. Well, equity is not equality. Equity is admitting that you are dirt. It's admitting that you are the holder of um, uh, equitable title, that you have no rights. So to plead equity is to say, to plead for mercy. I have no rights. If I plead equity, I'm merely pleading for mercy, for fairness. So they corrupt us, they trick us, and they sidetrack us from the history that is there in plain sight if we can just get over the mind virus and image training that they put in our mind where we keep going, common law, common law, common law. There is no rights in common law, it's privilege. I don't know how many times I, I say it, but I, the problem with mind viruses is that they stick there and, and it causes us to kind of almost man the defences. So when you hear this fellow called Frank O'Collin saying that, the mind virus says inside of you, oh, don't believe that, that's rubbish. Uh, and you don't see the logic of what I'm saying. Anglo-Saxon law is the foundation. Wow, that's great, Frank. Thank you. Uh, it's leads to come in to the next question, and then we'll get to Ron on the phone. Uh, can you discuss the best 
methods for healing others of mind viruses? Yeah, there's two things. To live your life and demonstrate a balance in yourself. To respect that people uh, come to things at their own time. To never shove anything down anyone's throat. Uh, and to behave honorably and respectfully because you are the biggest, all of us are the biggest symbols and the biggest examples of the truth of what we're saying when we live it and we exhibit it and we behave it. And secondly, when the time is right and when people are interested, to offer them and show them that this information in fact is written down and they can go and see it in their own time. But never force people. Never go to people and expose them because when, when some, you go to someone and you start exposing the mind viruses, this is something where you are like going to someone and cutting their arm and exposing their flesh. It is pain. It is nauseating. And in many cases, even if you're proven to be right, the experience is so traumatic that your relationship will never be the same. Give people the time. People are waking up without UK there. People in Spain, Italy, people all around the world are waking up even though they haven't listened to a talk show or haven't read a page of UK there. That process is happening. So all what we need to really do ourselves is focus on ourselves, on how we conduct ourselves, on how we help and respect others. And it's through that that others will come to us at the right time. Very good. Thank you, Frank. All right, we'll go to Ron on the phone. Let's see. Hopefully we will. Ron, are you there? Hello? There he is. Hey, there Ron. He is. Hey, Frank, Terry, how you guys doing? Good. Good. Hey, I'm glad you um, explained the difference between Anglo-Saxon law and common law, because now... I have to rewrite part of that notice I did. But I'm okay. glad you brought it up. <laughs> Cuz I was I was uh following uh what Rob Ryder had written, you know, and he made a distinction between two different levels of common law and I picked the higher one, but that wasn't high enough. So anyways, I'll fix it. But hey, um when you were writing the cognitive law, did you ever consider the the term cognitive dissidence? Or dissonance, I think that's... Yes, 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 I did. Um, it, it, it is, it is uh, a, a very real thing that they do to us. And um, the, the concept is, say that their image training goes off track. Say, for example, you go away and you learn some truth and that truth is comprehensive enough for you to get a handle on a different way of looking at the world. And that might happen because someone goes to a pro progressive school or they went through homeschooling or their family is open to talking. It happens all the time. People get a whiff of the truth. So one way to, to, for the system to knock that back is to implant conflicting, um, conflicting uh, opinions so effectively it shuts that person down almost into a zombie-like state. Right. And no. then from that, yeah, go, yeah. Uh, I've experienced that for years with people. You know, I'll, I'm looking up at the sky, and it's obvious that there's chemtrails all over the sky, right? And right. I, I asked this guy next to me, what do you see up there? Oh, just the normal uh, contrail. I said, yep. are you aware that those have been up there three hours? Well, his eyes roll back in his head, you know, and uh, there's this deer gaze in the in his eyes and he walks off you know i mean but that is the type of reaction a lot of us get when we're trying to show people the truth you know well i, I and it is frustrating but i want to give you uh, another example of hope if you believe and 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 i think it will it, it does it helps me and i hope i hope it will help you too I've experienced one-to-one -one a large amount of frustration over time sharing information. I've gone to all different...